Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is 6.03. If you would, please stand as Dr. Mel Brown leads us in the invocation to Ms. Jessica Powell in the Pledges of Allegiance. Oh, let's pray. Our Father, uh, thank you for hearing our prayer. Uh, specifically, I ask your comfort for those who are dealing with the, the tragedy at the uh, the marathon. Help them deal with the chaos and the uh, tremendous emotions that are the result of that tragic event. We ask your protection on, for the servicemen and women who served to provide us with the freedoms we enjoy. We ask you to give us grateful hearts for this country that we live in and the things we get to do. Thank you for another great day today. Thank you for giving us the strength and resources to deal with the days that aren't so great. May our attitude always be positive. Help us not to be like people who pray for rain and then complain about it. Uh, this time we ask that your blessings are on this board. Give us the wisdom to deal with the issues that come before us. Help us be kind and considerate in our dealings with each other. Uh, may our sole agenda be to do what's in the best interest of students, faculty, the administration, taxpayers. These things we humbly pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Brown. Thank you, Ms. Powell. All right. Item 2A, awards and recognition. Dr. Stockton. Okay. For our first recognition tonight, I'm going to ask Mr. Pat Ferris, our coordinator of fine arts, to come to the podium to introduce our recipient. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Mary Ellen Castillo has made a difference in the lives of many students specifically at-risk students attending Milam Elementary, Sam Houston Elementary, Hauser Elementary, Travis Intermediate, Grangerland Intermediate, and Hulk Alternative Schools. Ms. Castillo has worked with these schools to implement arts programs at no cost to the district. These programs have already impacted thousands of students. In addition, Ms. Castillo co-chaired BAM, because Arts Matter, which is dedicated to the utilization of the performing of visual arts as a tool for bringing about positive changes in the physical, social, and educational development of both students and adults. Research shows that engagement with the arts has a positive impact on student academic performance, citizenship, attendance rates, self-confidence, and probabilities of completing upper level academic requirements. Ms. Castillo encourages such an engagement by initiating arts programs for student field trips to arts museums, by designing a program to provide student art kits, by encouraging student participation in creating art murals for schools and by creating opportunities for Conroe ISD students to perform at community events. It is my pleasure to introduce Mary Ellen Castillo. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I want to present this plaque to you. It's patrons, patrons Influencing Education, and we can't express our appreciation for all that you do for our students to make 
art alive for them and to keep it in front of them as an important element in their education. So thank you so much on behalf of the And of course, this is a PI award, Patrons Influencing Education. So that spells PI, so she gets a PI too. Shake your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. He's in a hurry to eat that fast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, item 2B. Item 2B. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Kathy Gibson, who is the Assistant Superintendent for Elementary Education, to uh, introduce our next recipients. Uh, President Sanders and board members, during the fall semester, Celebration Church had a desire to help with the district's Read for a Better Life initiative. They began by donating a book to every student at Glenlock Elementary. This was approximately 600 books. The donation inspired the congregation to do more, so they started a community-wide initiative called Kids Running for Kids. Kids Running for Kids is a run for students first through sixth grade that promotes education, physical fitness, and community out outreach in our youth. The run took place on February 16th on Market Street, and all the proceeds went to Conroe ISD to Read for a Better Life initiative. Each of our elementary school libraries will receive this bundle of new books. I'd also like to mention that not only are these fun books to read, they support a variety of genres and topics that are current and timely to our students. For example, Big Mean Mike. Big Mean Mike is a great, great read aloud story, pre K through, through four, and Big Mean Mike is a dog who wants everyone to know that he is the toughest dog until his life intersects with the group of four baby rabbits. His life changes. A book about character education, a great read aloud, and this is one of the nine books. Second book is Each Kindness, and this book won the Coretta Scott King Award, and this is a book about being kind, but this, the main character of the story had several opportunities to be kind, and she didn't take the opportunity, and she realized after it was too late that each kindness really counts and that it has a ripple effect. This is another great story. This also is, uh, supports our character education programs. And then lastly, Pigs, Pizza, Pigs, and Poetry. <laughs> <laughs> and this is How to Write a Poem. And it walks our fourth, fifth, and sixth graders through how to begin a poem and how to write poetry, which is what we're working on uh, in our classrooms. So these, each one of our elementary schools will receive these nine <laughs> tomorrow, as well as uh, that morning, the participants brought slice, slightly used books so we have 175 of those ready to distribute. These books will live on in the library and our students and teachers and families will enjoy these stories. So at this time, I am honored to introduce Pastor Frankie Mazapika, who is here to accept the award on behalf of Celebration. <laughs> I 
I've got a okay. few comments myself. Okay. And I'll give you five minutes for rebuttal. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, Pastor Frankie has been a friend of mine for a number of years. And to tell you truly how a grassroots effort can happen, uh, we were having lunch one day, and he said, Ray, we want to do something special for the school, for some schools. And so we picked a school, and they chose Glenlock Elementary as a school that they would like to represent. And, and they gathered uh, books and took them to the school. And I heard many stories about fabulous day you had from everyone at the church passing out books. And then we had a, a meeting, and he said, we want to do more. And, and so we talked about what does more mean. And he said, well, you know, run. Many of your church members run. We want to do a run for kids. You know, there's, there's lots of runs in the woodlands and around our county for adults. What about children? What about students? And so they put together this flyer. And uh, then he asked three special people, Dr. Stockton and uh, Kevin Brady, and then the president supported it. Didn't matter then. But it was interesting that every one of us, uh, we said, well, what are you going to do? And we said, we want the students, we, you know, tell us what would be important. And we all said, read for a better life. That is, that is our school board's mission as we go and visit schools. The most important thing we tell students that you need to do every day, read. We want them to read every day. We want them to read to their parents, their siblings, read to the dog, whoever they can. But read out loud, read to themselves, but read. And so Frankie and his church took that message to heart. They had how many? Five over five thousand dollars was Absolutely. raised, and all of that money was donated to Read for a Better Life program. How many total students ran that day? Or two hundred and fifty children got out and raced. And so I'm just so proud of them. Uh, get my glasses. This says, Patrons Influencing Education Award is presented to Celebration Church by the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees in appreciation for your commitment and your dedication to the students of Conroe ISD. And pie means pie. Yes. So here's a nice <laughs> I'm going to tell my wife I made it. Thank you so much. I can see that. I don't know if you do that. All right, item 2C, Dr. Stockton. I'm going to ask Mr. Cox to come up and uh, make the introduction for the next presentation. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. It's really my pleasure tonight to introduce uh, the presentation of the SCORE check. Uh, SCORE, if you're not aware of it, stands for Schools Conserving Resources. It's a program that was started in 2008 by Entergy, uh, and it rebates portions of the costs of projects that are qualified projects that, that school districts uh, initiate that result in uh, energy savings or savings of our resources. And before I introduce the people, I'd like to recognize uh, some, some of our, our staff that have been involved with this. Roger Garvey is our energy manager. He's here tonight. Roger, thank you. And Marshall Schrader, director of maintenance and custodial. Uh, the two of them are the principal individuals in our organization that work on the SCORE project. And uh, let's you know, uh, when I was talking with Marshall and asking him, now, now tell me again exactly what SCORE stands for, he said, it's check. <laughs> and that's another way to look at it, because since this program began in 2008, we have received, Conroe ISD has received over $260,000 for project. Thank you very much. They're here tonight to present us our annual check. 
And the people presenting tonight will be uh, Phil Lanier is the energy is the energy program manager for this program. Uh, come forward, Phil. Uh, Victor Inman is our new account rep. He's just moved here uh, and is taking over uh, our account relationship for Conroe ISD, and we're very happy to have Victor. And then a, a special person is Megan Frisa, who's with Clear Results. The first two are with Energy. Uh, Megan is with Clear Results, and Clear Results actually is the uh, company that Energy is contracted with to verify not only that these are qualified projects, but that they actually deliver the results. And I'm happy to say they tell me that from these projects, we not only have received $260,000, but we've saved uh, almost a half a million dollars. So. Yes, thank you all for letting us come tonight. I guess if you come with a big check, you get welcomed a little bit better. <laughs> but uh, like I said, I just wanted to uh, say uh, um, my name is Victor Inman. I am the account service manager for Entergy. Uh, I'm just now relocating here to Conroe. Um, as you can tell, I've been, been around for quite some time with Gus State Utilities and Entergy and just re relocating here from Orange, Texas. So I look forward to working with uh, with all the Conroe School District and a lot of other duties that I have, but it's a big challenge. Uh, I was really surprised when I heard about the number of campuses that y'all had. I mean, <laughs> uh, I, that was the first question I said. I said, well, how many campuses does the school have? They're like 55, I believe, if I'm correct. And I'm like, you know, Orange County doesn't have 55 campuses for four different school districts, you know, so it, it, this is a, it's a real thrill for me to be here and work with you. And now I'd like to, uh, I just want to say thank you and be around for quite some time and Megan, give a little more information about this. Thank you, I appreciate it. As Victor here said, I'm Megan Frisa. Um, I did want to say also thank you, uh, Mr. Cox, and I wanted to elaborate on that a little bit. Yes, you'll have saved through the through what projects have gone through the program, um, a half a million dollars. However, for other projects, behavioral, behavioral changes, y'all have saved since 2008 over $3 million in energy wow. savings. Oh. Congratulations on that. Um, I did want to thank um, uh, Dr. Stockton. I also wanted to thank the members of the board for approving these types of projects and allowing um, Roger and Marshall to do their amazing jobs and I want to thank y'all so much for letting me bug you and getting drawings and emailing you all the time. Um, these two gentlemen are amazing and they're a pleasure to work with so, so thank you all very much. Um, I did want to mention real quickly some of the um, green that this, you know the green goods that y'all have done here. 460 cars are off the road for projects that y'all have implemented. Um, they've saved over 263 thousand gallons of gasoline and have saved over 500 acres of pines. So it's really amazing stuff that y'all have done. I just want to thank you and again for your programs that you did last year. Um, we'd like to present this check to you all. Connor SD, thank you all very, very much. Thank you very much. I believe that those, those funds will be put right back into the same program. Yes. That's that. So hopefully it'll be bigger next year. All right. Item 2D, citizens participation. Ms. Ferris, and it, has anyone registered to address the board? All right. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons 
who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for the presentation. Delegations of more than five must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Ferris, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. John Hennigan. Brought my posse with me. <laughs> President Sanders, board members, and Dr. Stein. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Woodlands Kiwanis today. Our organization is all about serving our community and more specifically serving children. That being said, I, I couldn't help, uh, we couldn't help our youth without outside assistance. The Kiwanis has long, a long history of youth events. South County, one of our more reward in South County, more, one of our more rewarding events is Special Olympics. With an average of 250 to 300 Olympians and similar numbers of volunteers, it always seems we've honored all who are involved. But after 29 years of Special Olympics, the Kiwanis would like to recognize a special partner without whom Special Olympics could never happen. Oak Ridge North High School has been the, state of our, the site of our event for its entire history. Without their help setting up track, supplying cheerleaders and football players and coaches. The Woodlands Kiwanis couldn't, uh, could never get away with doing this huge event. I will tell you before I even go on with, with my notes, today we are especially pleased because the Woodlands Kiwanis has created uh, an, a, spe a special award. Uh, and it means a lot to us. We don't normally do that kind of thing. Uh, but the people that have been involved with this that we have not honored enough uh, this, we understand that by allowing our event and working with us always starts at the top. Because of this, we'd like to honor today with a, a Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, Principal Tommy Johnson. <laughs> Uh, this is something that uh, there are two of them in the history of the Woodlands Kiwanis, and we've been around for a lot of years. So, so thank you very much. Don't use these notes. No, so, <laughs> no uh, I'm just uh, shocked. It's uh, uh, it's a great event. It's uh, it's. Uh, one that once you go to, you realize that we receive uh, just as much as the kids do. When you look at our students and, and our staff that support it, they, uh, we receive a lot back. So I can't say uh, uh, how much I appreciate uh, this. So thank you very much. <laughs> If all of you can come over here, just the greeting line. Thank Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, that's great. 
<laughs> Stuart Schroeder. Mr. Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, I just learned this evening that Principal Marlene Lindsay of Gladys is retiring. And on behalf of the Cochran's Crossing Village Association, I wanted to congratulate uh, Marlene on her retirement. I also wanted to thank her efforts with Gladys Elementary and their school-wide recycling program of collecting plastic caps for our village association. It, it enabled Cochran's Crossing to win the women's competition among the eight village associations for the last two years consecutively. <laughs> and uh, I just uh, thank their contributions to recycling and cleaning up our environment and helping us out. And um, that was basically it. I just wanted to say thanks, Marlene. Where's the cake? <laughs> yeah, we'll Anyone else? Okay. All right. Okay, if there's no objection from board members, I'd like to move <clears throat> item eight up on the agenda. Hearing no objection. Items 8A. Speaking of Gladys Elementary School, we've just heard that Ms. Lindsay's retiring, and, and just thank you for your service, and you're going to be greatly missed as, as a friend, as an, a colleague, and someone who leads our students, and thank you for all that you've done. Um, but since you have announced your retirement, we are, are ready to... Um, I'm ready to make a recommendation uh, for the next principal at Gladys Elementary School. I'm very pleased and excited to make this recommendation. Uh, Danae Wilker is currently the assistant principal at Gladys and has trained under Mrs. Lindsay is my recommendation. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Stockton and the Board of Trustees for the opportunity to serve in this new role as Gladys Elementary Principal beginning in the school year 2013-2014. I plan on carrying on the rich traditions and excellence in education that was established by Mrs. Lindsay. I'd also like to say thank you to my family that's here this evening. I have my husband, Tom, my daughter, Lisa, my son, Aiden. My mom and dad are also here, Bob and Sylvia Schoner. And thank you to my staff members who are here this evening also to show their support. Item 8B, naming of principal high academic alternative high school. Dr. Stock. In the last 10 years, I've had the opportunity to recommend, let's just say, a lot of principals uh, to the board. And I just think this is the first time I've been able to recommend, or I've been in a position to recommend a naval veteran, which I think is really cool. Um, <laughs> It's my pleasure to recommend to you Leonard Brown. Leonard is currently an assistant principal at Conroe High School, and I'm recommending for the position of the principal of Hawk Academic Alternative High School. So moved. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? All opposed? Congratulations. <laughs> President Sanders, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. Uh, give all praise and honor to God for his blessings. Uh, I'd like to thank my, my, my 
a special blessing to my wife. Here. For all his support. Um, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Noll. He's been a great mentor and leader for me. Uh, Ms. Drummond, uh, Dr. Hines, and Dr. Stockton, and members of the board for this opportunity to, to, to lead in, in, within CI, CISD. I'd also like to take a moment to, to thank uh, Dr. Bacon. I feel like I'm stepping into a, a job that uh, it's, it's hard to follow, someone that's been so great. I'd like to, uh, but I'm looking forward to taking the baton and carrying Hawk forward in the future. I'm, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to work with the staff members. Thank you for coming tonight. And I'm looking forward to meeting you guys here in the, in the near future. And again, I'd just like to thank the staff for this opportunity. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Sanders, before we go to the next item, um, I, I didn't realize Dr. Bacon's in the crowd and would like to recognize Dr. Bacon for her many years of service in CISD and her excellent leadership at Hawk High School. And Dr. Stark, if I'm not mistaken, we have two uh, state principal of the years. Is that correct? <laughs> both. We do. Wow. We just we just we're well, we're going to lose them in May. Is that correct? <laughs> retired at the same time. Both retired at the same time. So that leaves some opportunities out there for some others. Yeah, that's that's good good. Right. All right. Item eight C: Naming of the principal D A E P, J J A E P, and J D C. Dr. Stark. I am very excited to. Uh, additionally, on uh, my third recommendation tonight, um, to recommend someone who's who's really a good person and going to do a great job at DAP, JJAP, and JDC, and uh, that is Jeff Eldridge. He's my recommendation. So move. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Congratulations. Motion carries. <laughs> Dr. Stockton, board, board, I appreciate this honor to uh, serve in this capacity, students in the community of the Conroe Independent School District. I've been at Oak Ridge High School for 15 years as assistant principal, uh, working with children, helping them move forward and be successful. I hope to continue and pray that I continue to do that job as effectively as well at DAP. <laughs> at this time, I'd like to uh, introduce my wife for 22 years, Tammy Eldridge, who also is an assistant principal at Oak Ridge Elementary. Oh. One other person I'd like to thank is Tommy Johnson, my principal here. Here. <laughs> His mentor recovery. Again, Dr. Stockton aboard, I appreciate the honor. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. It's nice to see somebody taller than Dr. Stockton. All right. Okay, I guess we need to work now. Item three, consent agenda. Does anyone wish to remove any item from the consent agenda? If not, do I hear a motion to approve? We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All right, if not, all in favor and all opposed, motion carries. Right. Item 4A, information on selection of mascot for Ann K. Snyder Elementary, Dr. Stockton. Okay. I have to say, that, that was an exciting beginning of a board meeting. That Absolutely. Was really, that was really fun. Um, See you. I'm going to ask Dr. Gibson to come and present this information item, and then next month we'll come back and ask for a, a, a selection. So, Dr. Gibson, if you'll come at this point. 
Good evening, President Sanders and board members. Uh, tonight, I would like to share information for the nominations for the campus mascot for Snyder Elementary. In early March, Mrs. Lindsay Ardwan, principal, implemented a mascot selection process. The mascot selection process included solicitation of nominations from students and families for school mascot names. Once the top mascots were identified, students and families were able to nominate their favorite mascots. The following nominations for the campus mascot I will share with you. First one is Snyder Elementary Scholars. The second one is Snyder Elementary Stallions. We will return in May for our recommendation for the Snyder Elementary mascot. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Item 4B, <laughs> Athletic Track Replacements and Renovations. Dr. Stein. I'll ask Easy Foster to come to the podium and make that presentation. President Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, uh, I bring forward tonight for a recommendation, an action item for the athletic track renovations at the Woodlands High School, Knox Junior High, and Moorhead Junior High School. We received four proposals for this particular scope of work. We've evaluated these proposals and selected, or recommend rather, Fisher Tracks Incorporated as the best value for the district. The proposal for this project totals $216,148, and the funds for this project are provided in the general fund. This project is a life cycle replacement of existing facility. So moved. There's a motion. Is there a second? second? We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All right. All those in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. All right. Item 4C, turf replacement, Moorhead Stadium. Dr. Stein. Mr. Foster, I'll let you introduce this item also. Again, President Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, I'm bringing forward tonight an action item for uh, recommended for approval. It's the athletic track and turf renovations for Buddy Moorhead Stadium. Again, this is a life cycle replacement item. We've received six proposals <coughs> for this particular scope of work. Hellas Construction is shows to be the best value for the district. Hellas has a prior relationship with Conroe ISD and completed the project, a similar project for Wood Forest Stadium. Uh, in addition, uh, the proposals were evaluated by our department. Conroe ISD Athletics has also inspected installations of the three lowest bidders uh, to verify the quality and feel for the particular materials we're installing. The material that's been brought forward for recommendation, I have samples here if the board would like to put their hands on them. Uh, Hellas will be doing not only the, the turf replacement for Buddy Moorhead Stadium, but also the track replacement at Buddy Moorhead Stadium. The proposal for this cost, uh, the proposal cost for this project is $566,500. Funds are split up. The track replacement is part of the general fund, and the turf replacement is part of the 2008 bond. This is not the one. This first one, right? The, the triad, the uh, triad is the is the material uh, that is to be installed. The second sample is merely showing the integrated stripes to the material. <coughs> So you're at, we're asking your approval. All right. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes. This old or new? What, what do we have here? I, I didn't hear the question. It explains this. Show in a stripe. It's the, uh, the same turf. What? No. They're, no. They're the Hellas Triad, which is the solid color turf, is the turf that's being that's being selected, recommended to be installed on Buddy Moore Stadium. Okay. The second sample is merely to show how the stripes will be integrated into oh, the system. Okay. The, the stripes won't be painted on. They'll be integral to the fabric. Apparently they're painted on. Say it again. Apparently we paint them on them. Not all of them. Some of them are. I have a question about the you – know, I made the motion. I'm all for it. But uh, alternate one and two, I, I'm not quite sure I understand what those are. Uh, well, we had alternates for this bid. Al one of the alternates was to actually place turf over the concrete drainage areas along the sides of the field so that those concrete pieces aren't a safety hazard. Okay. And the second alternate, which was not selected, was to put turf in the D zones at the end of the okay. But uh, 
alternative one was included. Uh, I may be lying to you, but one. One plus the base proposal is your 260. Correct. Whatever. Yes. I mean, excuse me, 560. Mm -hmm. Dr. Brown. Uh, would you speak a little bit, to, since this wasn't the low bid, what it was that made uh, made that the best uh, best value bid? Certainly, it, it's a multi multi part deal. Uh, we received the bids and evaluated the bids based on the the materials that were quoted. Um, the material quoted for the lowest bidder did not appear to have uh, a track record in the industry to meet our quality standards. The second bidder. Uh, had a series of failures over the last five years with their product. A Hellas uh, has a prior relationship. I said they installed the turf at Woodforge Stadium. Uh, they have also they're, they're, have a long-standing record with no problems mm -hmm. with that particular field. Uh, in addition to that, uh, our athletic director Danny Long and his crew visited sites where these where the products were installed, so that they would get a first-hand feel for the turfs as they feel in their installation. See how they're see how the work actually performs over time, and they brought back the recommendation to stay with the, the Hellas product. One more quick question. How many generations have we come since we did uh, Woodford Stadium? And the, I, and they, they come with new uh, AstroTurf, if you will, new designs. New, I mean, this one has a, some kind of reverse seam in it that makes it stand up straighter or something like that. I don't know. Whatever I believe so. <clears throat> Danny Long could probably answer that question a lot more technically yeah, come than on, I could. Coach Long. Just curious how, many, how often they uh, come out with a new product. This is the newest version of the um, Hellas Turf, and it's called um, the Matrix. And they, they actually put an, one additional blade in the fiber that causes it to stand up a little better. They felt a little longer. The field that we went to see was it. Uh, East Central San Antonio, uh, and where the uh, Conroe High School uh, new head coach actually uh, played on that surface, the new Hella surface, uh, last football season. So I took Coach Smith from the Woodlands, Coach Rush from Oak Ridge, and Coach Frizzweivelt from Caney Creek. We drove to San Antonio East Central and actually walked on the turf, saw the difference. We, we started here at our field uh, at the natatorium, and we walked around out there, and then we drove to San Antonio and walked around on that. So where we could see the difference in the two, uh, and then with the uh, history that we have with the Hellas, this turf down here is five years old. All the coaches, not only our coaches that play on it, but coaches, I believe we hosted four or five playoff games there this past year. They really enjoy playing there. So um, we have a five-year history of a good surface. This is the next best that Hellas can offer, and we uh, I felt that it was best to recommend we stay What's with What's the approximate life cycle of AstroTurf? On most all turfs, I believe the warranty is eight years, um, eight to ten years. And Moorhead's had how long? I know you want an extra year because mm -hmm. it was safe, but that, you know, just... I, uh, I'm sorry I wasn't here. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine. It's, that's fine. Yeah. Motion stands. Okay. How did you qualify the lower, um, the lower quotes that material that was used, how did you qualify that they were, that was in fact an inferior product? Well, it, turf is basically turf and, you know, you, we, the lowest bid actually went down at the, at my, <laughs> where I worked last in, in Tyler, Texas. They just put some down this summer. I watched the installation going up in the summertime and, and walked on it and I walked on this and I just felt that this was you know, a better, a better surface. You know, I mean, that's, I really don't, you know, in, in regards to the number of stitches and the number of uh, how much rubber they put in that type of stuff, the stuff is pretty close to being the same. I, uh, on the second, was it John Cooper Field? I walked, and I drove over there, walked on it, and then there's uh, one of the others, was it a &M Consolidated, where we had the district track meet, and we all were out there walking and looking at that. <laughs> And we just uh, really feel that the stuff that was purchased at Wood Forest five years ago, uh, and this is the next best version, and we just feel like it is the best to put our kids on. Yeah. Not quite as good, or it's better than. We feel like it's the best, the, latest the, 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 best, the, latest the latest, greatest version of, of what they've put yeah. down. Uh, there's 
Simmerfields and Brian, uh, Brenham, uh, you know, these guys that coach on them, the, you know, the kids know how they feel and stuff, and and they really enjoy the wood forest. And easy, you said something about the field turf actually having some failures, yeah. seams or something. I, well, well our, our consultant who drew this project up for us, Brooks and Sparks, reported that field turf had had in the last five years had significant failures of their system and in and, and at least five locations they've had to go back in within a three-year period and replace that entire field any more discussion okay and this is a recycle uh, life cycle it is a yes. life cycle replacement. Part, uh, a portion, the track portion is funded from the general fund, and the turf replacement is funded for the 2008 bond referendum. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? We'll okay. make sure everybody gets an opportunity. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any final discussion? All right. I ask you to vote. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. All right. Item 4D, Caney Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant Upgrades. Uh, Mr. Foster. Again, President Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the boards, I bring forward tonight an action item uh, recommendation for approval for a guaranteed maximum price proposal for the Caney Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant Chlorine Contact Chamber Replacement. This is a, uh, a, a unit that has been in service for 19 years and has essentially run its course. It has run out. Um, Ellisor Construction is acting as a CM at risk for this project. They receive proposals, um, verify those proposals, verify the specs. The proposed bond cost for this project is, or proposed cost for this project is $337,775. Funds for this project are provided from the 2008 bond fund. Move the approved. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All right, all those in favor? And all those opposed, motion carries. All right. Item 4E, bond referendum update. Okay, Mr. Foster, when you're ready. Again, President Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, to give you an update for our 2000 bond, 2008 bond referendum project, starting at the Conroe High School ninth grade campus. This project is approximately 35% complete. It is scheduled to uh, be done over this summer and open for school uh, when the 2013-2014 the, the school season session opens. I'm sorry. We're looking here at a picture of the gymnasium portion of the project. It is the critical path portion of the project to get the gymnasium closed in, get the air conditioning turned on, uh, so that the flooring material going in these gyms can, has time to acclimate the <coughs> over the summer. The flooring material is scheduled to deliver the first week of May, which is right on target. As you can see here, the uh, uh, installation of the air conditioning system and equipment is, is moving along nicely. You're looking at uh, our insulated ductwork. Um, the equipment is in place, is ready to start up, so as soon as the walls are closed in around it, we'll be able to turn the air on again on schedule. This is moving backwards uh, outside the building see the progress of the walls on the outside, it is progressing nicely. And again, it is on schedule. Moving forward to Ann K. Snyder Elementary. This project is approaching 90% complete. The exterior masonry is uh, almost done. The cast stone entities that make up the front entrance are scheduled to arrive on site first week of May. Then it will be completed. This school will open for school in August. So, See the finished product, uh, finished floor tiles, finished colors are going on the walls. Casework, ceiling tile, carpet are ready for installation. I believe the carpet installation begins next week. And it's coming on on schedule. At John V. Pete Junior High School, again, this project is approaching 90% complete. It's in the very similar stages. The uh, exterior masonry is, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, finishing up nicely. Uh, this school is on schedule. It is scheduled to open in August of this summer. Much the same situation. The cabinet work is in place. Ceiling grid is in. 
finishes are being installed. Uh, you can start to see in the gymnasium corn product is is staged and acclimating. Uh, kitchen is awaiting equipment. We're going to flex school number 14. This school is on schedule, scheduled to open from August of 2014. Uh, they're currently erecting steel. So there's not a lot to talk about. Yes, sir. Can I ask you to jump, go, go, jump, go backward to the Ann Snyder uh, Elementary? A couple more. The one that shows the colors is what I'm looking for. Apparently. Is that it? That's the gymnasium. Okay. That's the well, library. just stop right there, okay? Um, when we were looking at both of the designs a while ago, they were like green and gold, as in like real Baylorish, and that would be very apropos and have no problem with that, even though I'm a Longhorn. But I think green and gold and blue and orange is going to be interesting. Uh, does that have any... No? We, it, it's <laughs> it's an elementary, schools, not a sports team, right? Yes, yeah, so in the high schools, we do match it up pretty closely, and junior high is a little bit less. Elementaries, it's not a high priority, unless you all want it to be. Right? <laughs> well, I don't want well, to repaint the you, walls, let me put it that way. I, I promise you, I don't want that. Do but, you uh, recall when we first, at, at least when I first came on the board, and we first started building more schools, mm -hmm. Colors for the interior of the schools was brought forward to the board. I don't know if we actually voted on them or if it was informational, but it was long before the school ever was built that we had some input on the colors. Like, well, I like that combination, or no, we didn't Conservative like that, that combination. Do you just, recall that, yeah. or am I just dreaming it? CJ, I, I, just can't I remember. remember the brick and the and the and the color schemes of these schools were ordered together. They were on separate ends of the camp. Do you remember this? On separate ends of the county, and they didn't feel like them being symmetric. Didn't you get a real deal on brick and colors and tiles and stuff? I, I just was trying to think about two. what the process was in the past so that we didn't get to this point and it was like, oh, well, that that's bright orange and blue or whatever. So we can certainly do that. Uh, I don't think we've done that probably in eight. I don't think we've done it recently. That's something no. we want to entertain? No, I'm just saying it was it, brought it forward does. as an information item at least to make the board aware it, before it, it came it, to this if point. If I hadn't seen that green and gold just about 10 minutes before I wouldn't have ever thought of anything about it but it just it just seems like it would be a little interesting but anyway moving south for the winter we will do that uh, next opportunity we have just maybe as information and then it wouldn't be a surprise Keep going easy, otherwise we're going to lose it. I'll ask the project to update you on is Flex School number 16. It is scheduled again. It's scheduled to open in August of 2014. Uh, it is on schedule. Uh, they are in the process of pouring the uh, building slab currently. And they're actually making very good progress on that way. And the steel for this building uh, is scheduled to arrive in approximately three weeks. And then it'll, it'll start looking like like 14 at that point. That's it. All right. Thank Let's you very see. much. Thank you. Very much. Any other questions? All right. Next item is 5A, approval of the 2013-2014 Employee Group Health Program Revisions and Changes to Optional Supplemental Benefits. I'll ask Mr. Cox to come up and present that item. <laughs> President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, I recommend the Board of Trustees approve the employee medical coverage revisions to the self-funded health insurance program and other optional supplemental benefits as recommended by the Employee Benefits Committee. The self-funded group health insurance program has not had an employee premium increase in three years. An increase in premiums is required to properly fund the health program for this coming year. Proposed employee premium increases are shown on the exhibit attached to this item. Uh, and I want to point out that relative to employee insurance programs at other districts, CISD employees will 
continue to have favorable rates uh, for all the programs in our basic HMO program. It should also be pointed out that the TRS2, uh, TRS Active Care program has recently announced a 15% increase on its TRS2 program, which is most comparable to our program uh, for their premiums in the coming year. Uh, in addition, the Benefits Committee has uh, recommended increasing the annual deductible for individual and families uh, by $125 and $250 respectively. The Benefits Committee also approved a 10% increase in the direct dental plan premiums. Uh, <clears throat> this is an optional supplemental benefit and the premium is required to continue this program. Terry Brown, our benefits consultant and first financial, uh, our third party administrators have recommended four new optional supplemental benefit plans as listed on here. Uh, they are both here this evening uh, to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, <clears throat> first financial indicates that these plans have been requested by our CISD employees uh, and uh, they're here to answer any questions you might have that I recommend approval. Sure. I want to introduce the people here tonight, Dawson, uh, Mike Whiteman with First Financial, Terry Brown, our health and benefits consultant. Um, I had some questions. I don't know if uh, President Sanders, if you want a motion before we start. But I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'll, I'll move. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. A motion and a second. Now the discussion. Um, first, I want to start by saying, you know, it's, uh, the way this is written, it sounds really good for our employees. Uh, and, Ed, if that was the end of the story, uh, I would be very proud of that comparison to TRS2 and, and, uh, and our premium rates and so on and so forth. But as we all know from a couple of months past, that's not the entire story. And I'm a bit, frankly, concerned. At, uh, at this recommendation. And I don't want anybody to feel it. This is not personal, it's not feelings, it's not, you know, I, I, I hate premiums going up just as much as the next person, but I am concerned in a fiduciary responsibility about the finances of this program. Um, looking at this, uh, we, we first talked about, we make a comparison to TRS, who has seen 6% increases in the year before this and 15 year, 15% increases this year. Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, uh, administered TRS2 is a much bigger program than our self-insured program and actuarially more sound than our program. And if they see 15% with their capabilities to manage premiums, I, I'm concerned that we're showing after no increase for three years, only 11.42% increase. And um, and then we look at the average employee com contribution in the TRS-2 plan on the examples you gave me, and 179 of those principal payments in years past is uh, roughly 39%. This next year would be roughly, you know, assuming no change in what the, what, the, what the employee pays, roughly 34%, whereas our employee's contribution is in the 22 to 23 range. Um, like I said, I'm not trying to use the shock claims that we had last year as a total representation of what we should do in the future, nor am I saying that we need to alarmingly increase the employee's percentage in this plan. But I am saying that it is not structurally sound, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, and I'm not an actuary, I know that, but I do know that the TRS2 plan is, is not as rich a plan as ours. We're offering more benefits for less money and, and, and less, less cost. And next February, I'm, I'm afraid we're going to be knocking on the door for a budget amendment again. And so, like I said, no, no feelings, no, no, uh, no answers. I'm very concerned that this is not, um, uh, big enough increase into the plan. And 
you know, I know we've got a budget to come up with. We've got employees to take into consideration. And please, I have a heart for those. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not cold-blooded, but I just know that what the industry is looking for. You know, if you ask Aetna, they're looking at 35% increases over the next year, over, period, end of discussion. And we're going to be setting this plan up for September through September, which is a benefit to us. And moving right along, we're increasing the deductible only at 125 and 250 so that we can maintain our grandfather structure. I'm also a little bit concerned that we would be overly concerned about the grandfather structure of the plan and several tens of thousands of dollars of benefits that that might cost us as opposed to the millions that improper pricing could cost. Moving on to, uh, and we can stop and handle this one piece at a time, or we can handle it at all, you know, whatever whatever you want to do. Sure, Carl. First, first, first financial piece of this, uh, you know, once again, uh, this is the second time that I've been presented information on on supplemental items that does not cost the district a dime. I understand that. Matter of fact, they might even save the district a dime in fees. But, uh, again, I have no idea but the, the pricing, or or the uh, at least on some of these, are the benefits of these plans compared to the plans in the plan. And I'm real curious about the employee participation and this claim that employees are asking for these plans. I'm in the business, and I wouldn't know to ask for Emeritus' vision. I mean, maybe they just saw it in the in the in the in the first financial book. I don't. I'm I not don't sure. think they were ref they were indicating they were asking for that specific. Okay, they were asking for a different option. They were asking for that type of program. I, I got it. Okay. Is there still a committee of, of, of personnel, of staff that participates in this discussion with you guys? Yes. Okay, so, right, so the benefits committee does have teachers and other staff participation. So they do have, they have some sort of input into this process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they absolutely do. Yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm just concerned. You know, even though the supplemental products don't cost the district money, I, I think we have an obligation to be responsible in knowing what we're voting for. And and I, I can't vote. I honestly can't have a problem. And like I said, it's just me, and we can move on if we want to, but it's just me. But I cannot vote for something that I don't understand fully and don't have all the uh, – specifically on the term insurance. We have term insurance in our plan right now. What's the difference? I, I know one of them is convertible and one of them is not. You shared some information with me today, but it had no premiums, and so I can't make a decision on that tonight. And, and I'm really concerned about the pricing here. I, I had a question. Now you referenced that having, go, having to go back to the well or come back to this committee. What's your preservation in that? Well, just approved $3 million to bring the plan solvent, and uh, I don't want to have to do that next year. I guess as a trustee, when I got the information, um, I tend to agree with Don that I don't think there's enough, at least for me, financially to make a decision tonight from this standpoint. And maybe I just haven't done my homework well enough, but I'm a little concerned about premium structure. I'm concerned about the benefit design because I don't think there's enough differentiations between your low and your high. Um, I'm concerned about the factors that of the mandated um, benefits that we're going to have to provide, and that keeps us out of the grandfather provision, or it gives us the grandfather provision, and then we'll have to um, offer the benefits. And likewise, that if we don't provide them, the offsetting cost to us as a district of what we're going to see in claims, I don't want to be in the position that every year if our claims are running way ahead of our premium cost that we're always having to supplement. I think we should get into a pricing structure, and that may mean small increases over a longer period of time versus big increases or huge benefit changes. I think we're better off getting into a better pricing well, I structure. I would like to point out that I recommended an increase in premiums last year. You did, and because... The board chose not to... You did. Well, well, if you don't have all these concerns, why didn't you raise these earlier so that what they could be prepared and then we could? Well, I think some of the information should have been sent <coughs> with, like, 
the, all of the alternate benefits that are being offered, rather than sending a summary, kind of give us all the pricing information. <coughs> what does it actually cost them? You know, what, how many employees are participating in those benefit programs? And what is the thought process behind the benefit design that you're suggesting? You know, um, we do have um, a high and a low. You know, how many do we have in, in, in those plans and what's your thought process in recommending them? How many do we have participate in the flex spending account or an HSA? Why aren't they participating? You know, th those are those are factors that are beneficial to our employees. Okay, well, if you'd ask for those information, I did ask for them prior to today. Well, I have, okay, I mean, and, and I just I, well it, it's members, to some yeah. degree, but what I'm saying, Dr. Brown, is 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 there if you didn't ask for them either. In my opinion, you don't have enough information to make this decision either. In my oh. opinion, I mean, none of us do. I mean, that's what I. Think. Let me. Can I'm I just asking my, for time. My perspective on that. I would hate for our employees to bear the expense now um, based on our speculation of future rates. I don't have an issue with coming back to the well and asking for a budget increase if it's so warm. Um, but what we're contemplating or deliberating on now is raising rates um, out of fear that we won't have enough. And uh, I, I don't think that's fair to the employees to do so. So I wouldn't be comfortable such a huge percentage-wise increase at this point. I just don't see it. I, think I, we're just... I, I, I would like to remind the board that we had a budget workshop in February, and uh, this is in line with what I presented there. And, and in that workshop, I indicated that the I, I projected a need to fund the health plan at, at the rate of $4 million. Now, granted, uh, that uh, there's no guarantee that four million. Uh, By the way, we're, we're speculating we're, on these. Why? All the way, we're projecting, speculating, yeah. we're guessing at what the cost are going to be. We're projecting <clears throat> this year that we were going to have a three million dollar deficit. I don't know where we're planning. We may end up with a greater than three. Correct. Well, uh, I'm, unfortunately, in the insurance business, uh, uh, some educated guessing is uh, is necessary, and say what you want. But uh, our guessing at 11.42% increase versus TRS, I promise you, I know who has better actuaries working. Well, well so I what, what's tell the you consequence? The, TRS, the, the consequences are this. T T hey, John, John, the, me, T TRS had a deficit of $141 last year. Yes, sir. So and, they, and, they and, might, they're doing a little catch up themselves. Amen. Can I ask, uh, Mr. <laughs> uh, and it's not over. What is the average increase in um, medical rates for the 2013 and going 2013 2014 in the industry, and what are you seeing as medical inflation? Uh, roughly, I'd say 12, 13 percent. Is the average is, increase? Is the average, yeah. It's, it's, some have been less than that, but you could say anywhere, depending on the carrier, depending on, on the plan. 10 to 13 percent. Well, that's like a doubling cube compared to what the average is. I mean, 10 through 12 is 23 to 25 percent. 2010 through 12 for two years, 23 to 25. Yeah, there. I mean, it, it goes up and down, of course. Now, I would say that what, what we're looking at for next year, no one really knows. And I think some of the some of the increases that have been talked about. Uh, by uh, Aetna, United, Blue Cross, some of these guys are speculation on the Affordable Care Act, and they're on they're on groups that are that are not large self-funded accounts. Exactly. So that that's a speculation that they're making that this is going to impact those rates that much. And I and in some cases, you probably know more than that. They're they're considering more than that. Is what they're. I believe that what's what's happening with our self-funded plan. We've had a very well-functioning plan for a long time. If you take a look at what we've done compared to other other plans in the area, we've been uh, under their cost and we've had better benefits than they've had. We have had an extremely efficient plan and just, you know, no more than two or three years ago, we had a seven or eight million dollar surplus. Uh, and we did we did recommend, you know, small increases, incremental increases to keep up. And even when we had good years, I, I'm, I'm always a believer in increasing our rates a little bit to keep us ahead of what was going on. We've had some bad years. We had 
We have some premiums, which are historically some of the worst expenses that you can have in a, in a plan that really, really cost us a lot. The grandfathering that we're trying to retain is worth 2%. Uh, the, and I would say also, uh, Mr. Husband, that it, you're right, Blue Cross has got great actuaries, but the, the Blue Cross pool and the TRS pool is considerably different. And, and I would say, I would submit to you worse than our, than our pool is because a lot of those, a lot of those school districts, uh, that was their last resort. They had no place to go. They they dumped off in the TRS because they they couldn't afford what they had. They were having terrible claims experience. They jumped in there to save themselves. And a lot of those school districts are continuing just because they got with TRS doesn't mean that their claims experience cleaned up any. I think they're they're continuing to have a hard time. And I believe that they will continue to have a hard time with that block. A large group large block of, of bad business, no matter how big it is, is still a large block of bad business, as you as you know. Yes, there's actually quite a few school districts in Texas who are struggling with the TRS, too. Yeah, they are. They're, and they're I, trying to get out of it, but they're yeah, stuck with it. Well, and, and you know, that was the issue. We talked about TRS, and TRS doesn't let you out if you get in, which I right. thought was a, a terrible idea. They, not only did they uh, kick up 15% on, on their TRS, too, but they also dropped one of their other plans, just took it off the board, so we're not offering this anymore. That's been a really difficult um, increase for those school district employees oh, to face. Yes. So yes. 11 point something percent might seem like not enough, but 15% is really detrimental to our ESPs and our support staff when that increase well, takes it on their I'm budget. I'm still failing to, to, to appreciate the consequence of us, our speculation of rates going up, not coming to fruition. Well, What's the consequence there? Well, let me, let me clarify again that the 11.42% increase is not the employees, okay? Just, That's the total price increase, okay? What are we going up for our employees percentage-wise? 97 to 108 is, is, is less than 10 percent, is it not? But it's less than 10 percent. 94 to 102 is less than 10 percent. Am I right? Absolutely. Okay. So I am not trying to correct this um, issue in one year, but I am saying that uh, you know you can say what you want to about Blue Cross Blue Shield, but they're actually writing that plan and they're going up 15 percent. I'm not sure that you can claim that our health situation is that much better. Given our, our results lately, we had a seven to eight million dollar reserve three years ago, and now we were having to put three million in it to be solvent. I'm saying we need a need a fix, and it needs to start now. It doesn't need to happen overnight, but it needs to start now. And this is a start that's behind the industry trend. Chairman, I move. We have a motion. We have a second. Isn't right. I, I'm saying we have one already on the floor. Uh -huh. Right. So the previous motion is still on the floor. Is there? You we want to vote. halt the discussion? Yeah. Yeah. So we vote on whether to halt the discussion. Right. So it doesn't require a second. So we are actually. I, I just wanted to restate it so everyone understood. We're uh, Dr. Brown is asking that we halt the discussion. We need to vote whether or not we want to halt the discussion. All right. It doesn't require a second. So I just ask you now to vote to. The previous question, right? Uh, to end the discussion. All those in favor to end the discussion. Uh, right, and all those opposed. Okay, four to three. End the discussion. All right. So now we have a motion on the floor. Second. And a second. All those in favor. For an amendment to the motion. Can. I'm looking to you as yes, our yes, parliamentarian. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I, I would ask that we table this until some more information is made available to me, please. That's not, a, that's not an amendment to the motion. That's asking to table. Okay, yeah. can I do that? Yeah, you can get a second. Yep, yeah. we have a motion. Stand corrected on my. Second. Well, all right, we have a motion and a second to table this item. Any discussion on the tabling of the item? Can I ask a question? Certainly. <laughs> as long as Dr. Brown, the parliamentary says it's okay. <laughs> yeah, Brown says I still need to ask permission. <laughs> it's your meeting. Um, what does this do for, so we're in April. What, what's the deadline? I just want to ask the question as far as. Well, I hand. Okay. 
Okay. Um, but how, what about If we resolve it at the May at the May board meeting, are we okay? <laughs> <laughs> we, can we can make it work. We can make it work. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay. I just had to ask a question. What do we what do we part and part of clarification the book the status is now we're voting whether or not they that's the table. that's actually correct, Dr. Brown. We are voting to table this motion or table this item until next meeting all right any discussion about that all right all those in favor to table this item raise your hand all right and all those opposed all right that motion denied so we're back to our original motion to approve this item all those in favor to approve and all those opposed. All right, the motion carries. Thank you, Mr. All Powell. right. Next item is 5B, financial reports. Dr. Stockton. Uh, uh, Mr. Cox, thank you for your hard work on that. Uh, and we will just in the side, we'll provide any information you'd like. Just let us know. And um, I, th I think it's that's been along the line of the information we provided in the years past, but anything that you want, let us know. And with that, I'll turn it over to, where's Darren Rice? There's Darren Rice. That was your time to walk over here, Mr. Rice. <laughs> Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Tonight, I'm here to present the financial statements for the district uh, as of March 31, 2013. Our first statement is our balance sheet. It will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Uh, the balance sheet shows your assets, liabilities, and fund balances for the district. Area, area we always like to look at is, is our cash and, and short-term investments. Uh, as you can see, the majority of our funds are in our external pools. We always like to keep track of uh, property tax collections. And as you can see, we're, we're right in line with where we've been. And, past years with our tax collection, so we feel pretty confident in that. Uh, the next <coughs> is our income statement shows our revenues and total expenses uh, for the funds. We always like to uh, look at what's generating our, our revenues at the local level. As you can see in the general fund and debt service fund, it's our property taxes, are our majority uh, revenue generators there, and food service, it's our food sales, and then self-funded is our premium contributions. We can also uh, look at our expenditures at the functional level. And also I'd like to uh, draw your attention to the other uses and sources line. And as you can see in the general fund, we've transferred out uh, a little over $10 million this year. Uh, Seven million of that uh, money has gone to the capital project uh, fund. And then three million is, is the funds that we talked about transferring over to the self-funded insurance. Uh, general fund balance uh, still projecting an increase right now of about uh, $13.4 million. Uh, debt service fund a decrease of about $19.9 million. And in August, we'll be able to make that transfer. Uh, child nutrition fund balance, uh, we've, we've increased our projection uh, up a little bit uh, in our increase. Uh, we did receive a six cent increase on our uh, federally funded uh, programs. We qualified with uh, more nutritional value in our menu, and they came in and gave us an audit. So uh, we're approved for additional six cents. So that'll uh, that'll give us funds to purchase more equipment and stuff in the program. Uh, Self-funded insurance uh, for the month of March. If we look in that column, you will see where we've added the three million dollar contribution from the from the general fund into the uh, self-funded insurance plan. So for the month of March, we had revenues of five point three million dollars. 
uh, expenses of $2.5 million for revenues over expenses, $2.8 million. So for the year, including the $3 million, we've had $19.5 million worth of revenues, $18.6 million in expenses uh, for revenues currently over expenses of $829,000. Health and Wellness Center participation for the month of March, we had 482, uh, 4,290 people have visited our clinic, and uh, that's averaging about 613. Uh, 2008 bond referendum, currently encumbered and expended $427 million. Uh, we have an estimate of about $27 million left to complete the bond uh, referendum. That'll leave us with a projected forecast of $454 million. And that'll give us a contingency of about $73 million. Our investments at the end of March, we ended uh, February with $408 million invested. End of March, $383 million invested. Uh, weighted average maturity to the district is one day, since it is in the pools. But the pools have a, a weighted average maturity in the pool of 59 days. Yield to maturity of our portfolio is 0.1075. And the, the item we use as a benchmark is the 90-day T-bill, and uh, that is currently at 0.0. Any questions for Mr. Rice? All right, thank you. Next item is item 7, action on executive session items. A closed session of the board will now be held on the matters contained in the notice for this meeting is authorized by section 551.071 and 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be at either this public meeting upon the reconvening of this public meeting or at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. It is 7.25 p.m. Now back in session, the time is 8. I'm sorry, 7.43 Mr. PM. Chairman, I move to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed. Meeting is adjourned.